the day is day six of the clarifiers jumping into I am the author of my life and figuring out how it actually all practically works on how to figure out what your programming is today I'll be going with Anthony the man the myth the legend once again he's getting connected right now I'm gonna be jumping right into it what's, what's up, up? How What's up? You? We're in orange today. I'm doing much better than yesterday. Ooh. Feeling, uh, I was under the weather yesterday. Today, I'm, uh, I'm back in the stratosphere, so I'm feeling good. Good. Nice. I see you still got light there. So do we. <laughs> yeah, just, just a wee bit. It's, uh, pretty bright out. We'll probably yeah. have, like, a ten bit left till sunset, sunset by, like, eight. Awesome, awesome. Well... Good to see you for another day, day six. Today, day five, will be going live after this conversation. I'll text it to you. I know yesterday I did a little late because it slipped my mind, but getting to the habit of things. So I will send you the link right away. It's on YouTube on the Clarifiers YouTube channel, literally just called with, with blue binoculars. So look out for that. You'll see these live there. Yeah, take your time. I'm going to be on the weekend. I'm going to share it like crazy and post everything up like together, kind of doing a little walkthrough. Because I've been yeah. really busy with work and everything. I will say it's been a bit, I like, I talk, I agreed to this whole thing on the weekend. Uh, this is just like a reminder for anyone else who ever makes commitments. You know, weekend mindset is a lot different than week, my, week work mindset. Um, so I'm sticking to my commitment, but I definitely will say every day after work, is a bit intense because construction work can be pretty labor intensive and mentally draining. So today though was a good day. I um it wasn't ov overtly draining, so I'm in a high spirit. So I'm ready for this video. I was excited for it. Well, yeah. yesterday I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. There's you got it's so uh, it's I fun. Like I get the contrast, uh, and I feel very victorious. So I will say that's a cool takeaway. Whenever you push through a hard day, uh -huh. it actually makes your other normal kind of days seem so sweet and awesome. Where like, if I had the same day like today for a while, I would just consider it normal. But because yep. I had that one dip where I was under the weather, I didn't call out, <laughs> even though I technically probably could have if I really uh, wanted to. Yep. And I forced my way through it. I learned a lot about myself with all the content we got yesterday uh -huh. because of what I went through at work. And then today I was just like, the day was so much smoother. I wasn't under the weather and feeling sick, so I could actually think. So everything flowed. And it was just like the contrast was really refreshing. I was like, oh, that's why it's good to push through those hard days because, A, it develops character. You learn a tremendous am amount about yourself because you're pushed to your literal boundaries, your stretching limits, so to say. Yep. And, um, yeah, so that was a cool takeaway with from yesterday into today leading up so, and now that it's day six, I feel like I'm getting into the routine of it. And even though it's a bit much, if we continue doing it, I'd probably be able to adjust. So that's another cool thing to consider. It's like sometimes it might take you like six days. Like it's just shy of a week, basically. Um, yep. So it's like, okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah night, night never follows night. There's always day after night. Winter never follows winter. It will be followed by spring and summer. Yeah, those days are, you got the ebbs and flows. Tide goes up, tide goes down. That's the beauty of life. That's the beauty of life. Well, let's let's jump right into it. Uh, will you introduce yourself to these awesome people on here and in the future? Um, okay, I'll, let's go a little bit different. So, hello, my name is Anthony DeSatnikov. I'm uh, what I like to call a student of life. And... Um, what do I actually mean by that? I was thinking about that because I've been using this intro for a couple of days. And a student of life is someone who notices patterns, I realized, at the core of it. It's like I love shapes and patterns, geometry. I draw it in my notebook like crazy. You can see some of my crazy intricate designs. And then I just play around with number patterns. But I, I realized it also applies to like human interactions and this whole process that we're doing. It's noticing the patterns in your life and the underlying reasons why you do stuff, how things work based off experience. So that's what I mean by when I'm student of life. I, uh, I'm always looking for how things connect or where a pattern might emerge. Uh, for work, I do construction work, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. And um, yeah, 
just worked on developing myself and uh, improving myself a little bit by little. Awesome. Well, my name is Lexi the Catco of Kazakhstan. Alex, <laughs> Alexi the Great. <laughs> Alexi the Great from Kazakhstan. Uh, yes, but I live in Hawaii right now. It's a nice one o'clock here. Beautiful. And um, I'm a, as well a student of life on I love to help people understand, understand the concepts and principles of life. I grew up without, with parents, but without parenting, which means I grew up with parents, but no mentoring. And so after I got my first mentor, my grandpa, then he passed away shortly thereafter, I was hooked. I'm like, that's what I want to do. I seen how he was helping people right up until three days before he died. And the only reason he stopped is because he physically could no longer talk mm -hmm. because he had no oxygen in his body to maintain conversation. So that really molded me. And here I am today, we're talking about a very specific subject, topic, uh, getting better and better at explaining because I've not seen anybody out there talking about this specific process, um, the process of catching your programming. Uh, how do you understand your, the, the program lines that are running through your brain? And so uh, therefore, that is what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, and now getting right into it, the last, the first couple of days, Anthony, we went through the actual process and, and then yeah, I got, day, uh, I'll show everybody. I got these little papers from each bit of the process of going through different trigger events, the yeah. actual process outlined yeah. different little things. Whoa. So <laughs> I just tipped over sitting. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. <laughs> Literally just tipped oh, over. Yeah. So, to, and so for a few days, we, we went over Anthony's uh, a few, tr few triggers or thoughts, negative thoughts. Then Anthony did that to me, practicing it as well. It's not about me or Anthony teaching each other. It's we're literally going through the process and showing you what this actually looks like in practical application. And both of us realized that there could be a little better pre-explanation before you actually get into the, uh, into the steps themselves. And so today, Anthony, I want to ask you for a favor. You ready? Uh huh. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes when you have a question in your mind and just when you're dozing off or when you're waking up or usually when you're taking a shower or taking a dump, just in those times when you can't take notes or you really have to force yourself to take notes, uh, the idea or the answer just comes to your mind, right? And you're like, oh, this is awesome. This is the best thing since sliced bread. And the next thing you know, you're done taking a shower, you walk out of the shower and it's as if there's this line between you and the shower, the moment you step out of it, you just forget everything. <laughs> or when you wake up, you're in that zone and, and that theta wave mind going into your beta and then that, that jump, all of a sudden you're just like, I know I had a great idea, I know I had the answer. Why didn't I write it down? So I've had, I will admit, I've actually not had that ha happen authentically that often. Uh -huh. I'm actually pretty damn good at remembering things, um, but it might happen where, like, if I don't write it down when I remember, I might yep. not remember it for, like, a day or two, but it always comes back, but yep. So that I have had that occasionally happen where I had a good idea, uh -huh. I literally, but then I, like, walked past a certain line, and it was just like, what idea? What what were, what were, what were happening? What where was I going? What and it's just yeah. like memory blank. Your mind got wiped. That information is no longer there. So yes, yeah. I have experienced that sensation. So that happened to me today. And as we're going through this, I'm realizing there's got to be a slightly better explanation that's to help a person better understand this process. Okay, I was actually thinking about that. If we my... should hold on a second, Anthony, I'm not hearing you. All right, All give right. me one sec. I need to grab something. Okay, sounds good. It's a uh, it's a book, uh, actually, Expert Secrets. Uh, I like in the book, um, like how he has these little yep yep stick <laughs> figure analogies right here. So yep. what I feel would be actually really useful for the whole process. So, well, uh, I'll I'll read out to you guys what we've had so far. So essentially, this is the process that I've written down. It's the six step process of how you. It, it, this is the actual process you go through when you're going trying to work through a trigger and a trigger being something uh, something triggers a certain emotional state from your subconscious mind and you're trying to figure out why 
Mm-hmm. So the first thing was, what did you actually want to create before this incident that the experience incident allowed you to accomplish? A, when we were going through it a couple times, we realized that question is a bit confusing. So that was worked upon. So then two was see how you're the author. You're trying to understand how you authored the situation by your thoughts, daydreams, um, beliefs at the time. Mm-hmm. Then three is the goal, to, the goal to achieve in step three is to reframe this incident or event that is now triggering a certain emotional state that is not conducive to who you're trying to be or what you're trying to create in your life. You want to reframe that event as positive from the context of you created that event in order to learn something or to achieve something. So then step four from the buildup of step one, two, and three is you begin to move from believing that you're the author of your life experiences to actually knowing. It's this transitionary period. So that's the goal of steps one, two, and three. But then we finally get to step five, which is what lessons did I learn? Now, this is the last puzzle piece we figured out. And most people jump straight to this when they're trying to work through past traumatic events. But without that little buildup, you might not get the actual clarity you need is uh, one thing we discovered. So lesson five was what lessons you learn from the whole situation overall. And then what lessons you learn about yourself in that situation. So it's kind of like a two prong um, question. And then step six of this process was do not blame the key players of that event or incident. Take on responsibility because you are the author. Um, And that's more of like a reaffirmation because it's just something you read. Um, So that's what we initially started off with the process. But then we figured out there's a way we need to work about it. And then there was the aspect that there's actually six types of programming. So there's one false beliefs. (laughs) Yep. Two, eight. (laughs) But I have six up to this point. So I want to share some more with you. False beliefs is one. Second guessing, self-doubt, putting yourself down or undermining yourself is two. Three is just bad programming that we pick up through people, shows, whatever it be. Four is past negative events. Now, we started this initial process working through my call. So uh, we started off with working on my past negative events. So that was the initial focus of the first five, uh, four videos, essentially. So... This process can be applied, obviously, to the other things, too. But continuing on, five is lack of motivation. Why am I doing this kind of feeling or the feeling like I want to quit or just being overwhelmed? That's a type of programming. And then six uh, was view of your life in which you're an extra in the movie of your life. You're, you're always like, oh, everybody else is having things go great, blah, blah, yada, yada, yada. Now, do you want to segue into what the other two are? Uh, yes, there is old habits. Um, some are good and some are, do not serve you well whatsoever. So seven old habits. Yes. Old habits. Um, got it. That's enough like, context. Yeah. Like there could be a good habit, like, um, waking up at a certain time or going to bed at a certain time. It's a good habit. Bad habits could be, uh, picking your nose in public or smoking or know, something like that. That's like, eh. just something you've been doing for a while that is yep. normalized to you, but may or may or not be good, but it's, it's just an old habit. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Wow, man, I'm being a little a little feisty here with all my material. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and then the second one, the other one is things that you start and then you stop again and again and again. The same thing. For example, I had a friend who would always die, uh, go to the gym, start going to the gym to, to get healthy and lose weight and then stop, start and stop, start and stop. And it went on for years and years and years. So things that you start, the same things that you try starting. I'll call it the begin-stop programs. Yeah. Starting quitting, the quitting modality. I just totally made that phrase up. but <laughs> I'm writing that one down, <laughs> quitting modality. Yeah, the quitting yeah. modes. And so, yeah, those are the other two that I was – and again, this is not an exhaustive list. These are just some of the ways – our subconscious mind is yeah. programs. So, to guys give you some context, the actual process is how you work through the micro event that you're experiencing to gain clarity on it. And you write it out like I was writing out on these pieces of paper so that you can finally process that event. You're rewiring neural networks and actually yep. reprogramming and reframing that experience. But then the actual list of the now eight, oops, let me cross out six and put an eight. It's going to look cool. 
Yeah. Boom. Uh, there you go. You can see right there. Six crossed out. Now I got eight, and I use different ink so you can see. Um, this is to give you an idea of where can actual subconscious programs come from. So that way, because as you're going to be going through this process, you'll discover that basically some of your programs are linked to completely different spheres, different programming things, and you're going to have to handle and come at them a little bit differently. So having an idea of what the basic ones are so far, there can be more. You could probably condense it, either or. The goal is to at least know what type of program it is, then go through the process. And um, what I've been doing is I've been numbering in the top corner the number of the type of program. So this one was a past event, past uh, negative experience, which is number four on the list, so I wrote four. You know, that way you are, you're trying to get this as organized as possible because imagine this is how you're rewiring your brain. You're, these little notes are the new representations of like, this is how I'm going to work and function. And um, yeah, so those are just some cool things that I noticed and just to awesome. condense the whole process up to this point now. Yep. And then uh, yesterday we went through a slightly improvised process off the one that I read, which was the six questions. Um, and yesterday we only made it through part one, which was really understanding that the experience is as taking it in as a gauger, just like a gas gauge or a heat gauge in your car. Then it's um, you're actually trying to write out the emotion. So I was writing out, you know, the feeling I had, what that progressed to moving up to the trigger point. And from there, I was just trying to get basically the actual mental imagery that is associated with that feeling state. Then I was able to work back to some actual past exper negative experiences or I guess you could say trauma. Certain times I got really sick. I got sick with Lyme and mono. And Lyme and Mono gives you extreme fatigue and one of the feelings of like, you just don't feel like you can do anything. Your whole body hurts. So uh, like yesterday when I was feeling blah at work, that feeling of I don't want to do this was actually very similar, I realized after doing this process, to way back in the day when I had Lyme and Mono. So it was, it's not that they're exactly important, but you're trying to understand the image in your mind because when I now, when I would say to myself, I don't want to do this, the stuff I was doing at work wasn't hard, but it felt as if I had Lyme or Mono in that, in that moment because that program was linked to that mental imagery in that experience. So that's actually the real power of this process is you're not just writing out the words and feelings. You're actually trying to get to the, what is the image you see in your head when you feel that emotion? Where did it come from? Is it, and then that, that's why you have that list, because once you get that image associated with that feeling, you can go through that list and see, all right, where is it? Is it a false belief? Is this me second guessing myself? And then once you have the clarity on that, you'll know exactly what you can do about it. If it's a false belief, delete it. If it's second guessing yourself, figure out why you're second guessing yourself and figure out how to actually build yourself up. But if it's a negative feeling, you reframe it to positive experience. Yeah, so past negative experiences, you can't change anything physically. But what you can change is, like you said, your perspective on it and the feeling you get when you then get triggered or think about it, yeah. which so is it what this good, whole... So it triggers goodness instead of badness in you. Essentially, it's like diffusing a bomb because your trigger is like a live ticking bomb that you literally never know when it's going to go off in the day depending oh. on what that trigger is. And you're always on freaking edge. That's where you get that anxiety because your brain knows that there could be a threat around the corner, even though it's invisible. It's an internal trigger linked to a set of memories. So you're going through your day. There's nothing that should set it off and boom, it goes off. Now yeah. this process is like, no, now you got the actual manual to how to disarm a bomb. And then you're like going through and you're disarming it. So then when yeah. you go through your day, you're not like, <gasps> On edge. How about this? You're you're taking an atomic bomb, you're dismantling it, and then making a nuclear power plant out of it. Essentially, yeah. Because some of our negative past experiences or programs can literally feel like nuclear bombs. Like literally, it's the end of the world. So yeah. it's a good way of putting it. Putting it. So yep. um. So yeah. Today, today, what I want to ask you for your help is, this is actually going to be 
even more so a setup to because as you explained there's so go all the way the back yeah there's, there's two phases to the process and in phase one the major focus is you hit on that feeling and then you understand the um, the steps behind it now before you even get to that i want to add this other step which explains the general concept so that when you're actually doing it you're you actually understand why you're doing it we should create a little stick figure like analogy kind of like comic type thing well, well today, basically today i'm actually going to be drawing it out so instead of doing a video of me personally i'm going to take my camera and put it onto a piece of paper and then I actually right. be doing that and uh and then we'll go from there that sounds fun. I uh I like drawing things out. So let's do this. Figure it out how to cuz that's is what I think is missing. The 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 process is simple as long as you can hold it in a mental image. So if we draw it out as a little like kind of stick figure story of like almost as if like use the stick figure to dictate the story of how you would do the process as the stick figure. You're Bob. You're at work and this is happening or you're at home and blah 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 and this trigger pops up and then it kind of like how would you go through the process and then just do like most of it narrated with like a little picture of each of the key things like you know bob getting all frustrated because the trigger showing an emotion then bob getting paper and a pencil after taking a walk you know what i'm saying yep getting the so, kind of gist of it well here i'll i'll do what i can we'll improve upon it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, do what you can. Can you hear me? Yeah, you were cut out for a bit at like do what you can. And that was it. Yeah, oh, that's that's I actually did pause. We'll, we'll do everything we can. We'll start with where we're at and then we'll make it better, better and better. That's what I like about mm -hmm. this 12-day uh, live series is slowly but surely it's getting uh, incrementally better. We're Kai Kaizen. Oh, I know what the first process. slide can be. Well, here how well, about this? Oh, yeah, okay, share that with me. We'll... So I'm going to call it Bob's Adventures in my paper. <laughs> Bob's Adventures. Like so Bo Bob finds himself in a, in a pickle, basically. It's like the first thing. And that pickle is that emotional state, that funk. So that's, that's actually where my first step is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll well, be doing I'm... drawing and writing, okay? Yeah, so, I'll watch. So we'll simplify it. Okay, can you see everything good? Is it clear? Um, I can only see the bottom left corner of the paper. Oh, that's the top corner. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what I should do is flip the camera like this, and then you'll see what I see? Yeah. Okay, let me... Like... Yes, if you straighten it out, that should be perfect. Your hands will be coming out the bottom. Yep. Hold on a second. I'm... Opa, let me do this. <laughs> this is I got fun. A, I got a big, big tripod here. Okay, perfect. is this better? Oh, that's perfect. It's actually a little bit closer, too, so you can see the paper easier. Okay, whoopa. Okay, bam. Got that like this. Okay, this is as beautiful as it's going to get. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, so it, it begins begins with this. I'm in an awkward position here now, but I got to get used to it. <laughs> you can hear me and see me well, right? Yeah. Okay. You don't have to speak as loud. Your your mic's good, so you can speak a little softer. Okay. So I would really ask you if you can write this out as we go through it too. Because once you write it, then it'll be much easier to to follow it, follow along with this process itself. So, boom, you get the moment. experience, right? Yes, the boom moment. And I'll define that. You um, say you had some thought. You had some thought or feeling. It took over your brain or it um, overwhelmed that you. That took the ship. Just say it took over the ship. Took over the ship. Nope. Uh, took over the ship. 
simple people understand it means the whole body was taken over by that feeling or thought. Yeah. And now you're in in reality what's happening is you're on a ro- on, on an emotional roller coaster. Now, if you're looking at it from a third person perspective, so what's really happening? A It was the last domino in a chain of dominoes. So I'll just write last domino. domino. Okay. Boom. Last domino. Okay, if you ever thought that to bring the image of dominoes when you hit one it just kind of goes Yeah, perfect. So, Everyone can see that. Now, the interesting thing about dominoes is that it's called the uh domino doubling effect, okay? If you take if you take a domino that's 1 inch, it will be able to take down another domino 2 inches big, 2 times bigger. So 2 inches tall. That domino can take down a 4-inch domino which takes down an 8-inch domino 16, 32, 64. Now imagine or a 1-foot domino in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps becomes a 64 foot domino. And there's a video of this actually. Yeah, I've actually seen the video, so I perfectly can so visualize. So if, if you come, come up to a house, a typical house is about 30 feet tall. That's right here. Now imagine a house double the height. <laughs> like starting from a, a one foot, and this is the, double, uh, the domino doubling effect. I literally wrote it, yeah, domino doubling effect. Yes, so uh, the domino doubling effect. Okay, now let's keep that in mind. Right now, you just had this boom, you had something happen, this emotion, experience, this memory just took over the helm, took over your ship, of uh, your mind, and what's actually just happened is that the last domino just collapsed. And have you ever seen in the movie where something huge falls in front of them and everything is just like, poof, this rush of air? I saw a video yesterday of, uh, it wasn't a domino, but it was like a domino it was made out of wood blocks. It was yeah. a like 16 foot tower where they first had the dominoes come up the edges. And then once you reach the top, the whole domino tower collapsed, yeah. or the wood tower collapsed down. And it was like, Woof. It's like, imagine... Like a car, you're standing on, uh, or a movie where the part is a person is standing there and there's a car coming at them. It's flipping, flipping, and then just stops right in front of them. So that's that's the kind of emotion a person is under with this last this this domino doubling effect. When you get that boom, you're in that emotional state or that negative or intense. It doesn't have to be negative. It could be an intense state, mind or thought. You're at that receiving end. That thing just like poof. You're thinking. And so then um, what we want to recognize, B, here, is that uh, what we want to do is recognize it for what it is, okay? This, this whole domino effect that just happened, I'm just going to write the, this down. We want to recognize it for what it is truly is is and what it is is a program running in your brain okay as a programmer would call it it's a line of code Boom. Program running in your brain, right? You see, well, yes. Yep. Line of code. And so now we have all this great information. We're thinking, okay, um, I'm at the boom. I just had this experience. Obviously, I'm at the rece- at the end of that domino. Um, this whole domino that just came down, it's a program. So we're recognizing that this was a program, a line of code that just, um,
Noting. So I got a call and I had to turn to turn it off. Um, so we have this code. You realize, okay, this is a code run. I got all this information, right? But what do I do with it? Well, boy, am I glad you asked that. I'd like to read a very, very powerful, two very powerful quotes. One is by Dr. Thurman Flea. Um, in 1934, he said, mind is an activity, not a thing. No one has ever seen the mind. However, we must have an image or there is no order in the mind. I will create an image and eliminate the confusion. So in essence, C is our mind. I'm just going to draw an arrow needs an image. And the question is, what are we drawing an image of? Of the mind. <laughs> There's another great quote. Uh, I don't know who said this one, but they said that the part of the mind that gathers knowledge is not the part that controls the instrument we are living in, aka our body and our mind. So the part of our mind, and I think that's a very powerful quote that I really think. Well, just... I, you kind of lost me when you said mind arrow needs an image, and then you wrote an arrow randomly under mind. Oh, I must that, have that got arrows... cut out there. So well, I must have gotten cut out there. What I said is before, like our mind needs an image. And so what are we going to do next? We're going to draw an image of the mind right now. Mm, I wouldn't draw it like that because you completely lose the person. I would draw another arrow from needs an image to the right. Oh, yeah, you're right. He, actually, here it goes. It just loses sequential order, and it can be really easy. So after needs an image, directly next to it. I, I actually, you know what? That's, that's what I should have done because I actually have it down like that. Okay, now so it's our mind, my needs an image is C yeah. and then D. And so let's what is draw D? that image right now. Let's draw an image of our mind. And it looks so, something like this. A circle? Draw, well, right, draw the image first. Huh? Before you write it out, I would do draw the image of the mind. Right here. We're drawing. You mean write the words out? Yeah. Okay. Just so, like, the people are actually understanding, this is you drawing out a picture of the mind. That way there's no room for confusion. Because of the quote, Dr. Thurman Fleet. Perfect. Dr. How do you spell Thurman? Uh, T-H-U-R, man. And then and Fleet, then Fleet? F-I-L-E-E-T. Perfect. So he said that our minds need need an image. And so everything that leads up to now is everything, we just have everything happening in our mind. And we and it's a program that's running in our mind that made us feel this boom moment. So, we so it's chaotic, which is what yes. he was mentioning in his quote. It's Right now you're in chaos and you're like, okay, I want to really re rewrite this code of line in my brain how do i do that well you need an image of your brain and how it functions in your or your mind how it functions this is how it looks draw a circle and then draw a line right through the half of it okay the top part is what's called the conscious mind okay conscious mind The bottom part is called the subconscious mind. This, the subconscious mind, I know that might throw people off and they're like, what is that supposed to mean? In other words, this is where our habits live. Our habits. Okay. So you feeling that experience like boom, you just feel this let's call it this, this negative feeling. Well, that's a habit that you're in. That's all. It automatic is. responses such as walking, breathing could be under the yep. subconscious function. So everything. Too. Yes, exactly. Including these, um, uh, getting yourself into this emotional state. It's a habit that your body is in already. And so you might be wondering now, okay, what's, what's, uh, the conscious mind? What, 
what role does it play? What does it do? The conscious mind, I'm going to do this. I'm going to draw a line from here and then draw the circle again, a half, have it out. This is what the conscious mind does for us right now. Our conscious mind gets information through, if you look at your, imagine your actual face. So our conscious mind gets information through our eyes. Then you go down lower, what's below your eyes? Tony, what's right below your eyes? Nose. Yep, so your smell, or your nose, smell. Under that is our mouth, so through taste. And then the next thing is our hearing. And then through touch. So these are the five senses that we are given that our conscious mind takes in. Now, no, people, these are really generalized because there are other senses such as like pressure, things of that sort, which can be kind of a mixture of different things. Okay. And so the interesting thing here is about our mind and our thoughts is that on a daily basis, so I'm going to just draw another arrow following, following through on a, in a day. So I'm going to write day. It is said that we have roughly 70 thoughts a day. So thoughts a day. Okay. Out of those 70 thoughts, again, going back to drawing that circle and the line, out of those 70,000 thoughts in that one given day, Wait, you it said 70,000, not 70? Okay. Yeah, 70,000 thoughts a day. I'm, I'm always wondering how do they calculate this, but let's just go with the flow of that. So they say through our senses, like these right here that we just went over, through our conscious um, senses, only 5% of those are original thoughts. So 5% original which means 95% of the thoughts are old thoughts. This is where it really starts, starts coming together. When we go back to the beginning and we ask, so where does this boom moment come? Where does Bob, Bob, at, from where does the boom effect happen? When we look down here, it, is, it happens because of this right here. It happens in this area, not in this area. So the domino effect, if you look at this now, it's like you can connect. The, uh, the domino, last domino effect happens right here in your subconscious mind. Because all your thoughts and ideas and memories, uh, they're so seamlessly tied together. It, it is our subconscious mind that has the power to be able to seamlessly tie together. And all you consciously are aware of is nothing more than that boom feeling, that, that feeling, that thought that you're having. Yeah, it, it, to give an example, yesterday, when, when the yesterday's video is that feeling of, I don't want to do this where I felt like I would just want to curl up in bed and just give up on everything while I was at work. Yeah. Exactly. And that we discovered at the end of the day was because of the old programming from my subconscious thought that was linked to an experience of when I had Lyme and mono where I had extreme fatigue. Um, and I was actually sick really bad for months on end. And it took me a couple of years to recover fully. So it was, it was a big thing, but that image was linked to that experience, that boom moment I had, and um, the process of getting to that old 90% thought of the intensity of that, I don't want to do this feeling where you feel like you're going to die, where it's like, no, I'm just feeling under the weather, and obviously I don't want to work, but I can. So, so this is interesting because... 90, this, this subconscious part of our brain, the 95% of our old thoughts, in here, this is where our current 
code is running. And the reason it's running is to produce a feeling in our body, okay? So let me draw it out like this. Well, I, I think a cool way to even explain it would be you chose the programs that run in your mind because at some point in time you were, you thought and believed that they were conducive to your well-being. Yeah, or at to some how you point, function. Very true. At some point you you created them because be it your culture, society, family, friends, whoever. I mean, think about it. Why do people smoke? Others are smoking, so you start smoking. Why do other people jump off bridges with um, like jump, bungee jumping? Your average person doesn't do that. Bungee jumpers who have friends that are bungee jumpers do that together. So it's like why it makes sense, how it makes sense is, yeah, you're right. It's, it's very much so like that. And so you have this brain. Again, draw the circle of brain and you go in half. It's your current program that's right here. Your current programming. I'll just say program, actual program. That line of code is running there. You might be asking, why is it running there? Well, because at some point you decided that that's what you want. And then this little line on the bottom here, I'll just write body. And under it is feeling. Now, mind you, when you were saying that you decided to adopt that uh, line of code, that believing thought or behavior, it's not saying that doing that was bad. It might have been extremely vital to your survival at the time of adopting that code. But it's, it's not, you're not looking at it from the context of like, oh, it's a bad thing. You're just trying to see what is there. Like, what yeah. is the thing? So that way you can work on reframing it. So that's just one thing I realize you got to watch out for. So here we are. It's a current code that's running to produce th this code that's running, this boom feeling. It happens and it's always going to happen over and over and over again because your subconscious mind is trying to produce a certain feeling. Okay, this is your body right here. It's trying to produce a feeling in your body. Because our bodies love consistency. This is why we only originate 5% uh, original thoughts. Because our conscious mind can only, um, it can only handle so much information consciously. The rest has to be put in our subconscious mind, for better or for worse. And so therefore, <clears throat> if you have that boom feeling, I guarantee you, I'll even put my head on the chopping block to say that, to say that, um, this feeling is not the first time you got it. You probably had it again and again. It might be slightly different. It might be the exact same feeling, the same thought, the same experience might be coming to your mind and Good result question. in the same outcome of feeling. Yep. You, in the, you wrote body in that small circle and what yeah, else? This is, this is your body. Um, it, it creates certain Just, feelings, feelings. Okay, there you go. Body your, feelings. Yeah, your, your, this is where your feelings reside. So your programming is creating certain feelings in your body. Yeah, okay. I got that. I, I, I got that whole process. I was just asking what the actual word yep. was. So body so feelings. Going forward, our body just loves to have consistency. It's, that's why it's so challenging to like, it takes too much energy to consciously think about something in here. So as soon as our mind can make it a subconscious or a habit, the sooner you th waste energy yep. thinking about it and you just do it. Yeah, you free up energy because our body is trying to keep us safe. So the big question is, what if I want to change it? What if I want to change this programming? Huh? So how do you change it? So I'm just going to write change it, question mark. How do I change it? This is how most people go about it. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, one second. Program. How do you change it? All right, ready. Here's how most people do it. Again, back to the circle, okay? Line through half. So now I'm not going to write conscious, subconscious. Just this is your conscious mind. This is your subconscious mind. This is how most people try to change. They have a desire in their conscious mind, okay? And then 
they rely on willpower to make a change. But willpower is a limited resource on a daily basis. So I'm just going to write limited daily resource. The thing about willpower is that you will run out of WP. You will run out of willpower. And when you run out of willpower, you have no choice but by design, you're going to go back to your old paradigm or old programming. You're going to jump to back to old program. Old programming. Run. I'm going to write just all run old. Uh, Programs, run old programs. Yep. I just ran out of ink, but I was ready. <laughs> so, again, you, this is how most people try to change. They have a desire. They're like, oh, I want to stop feeling like this. And they try or say they want to lose weight. They have that desire. They force themselves through willpower, which is a limited resource a daily limited resource, the later you go in the day, the less you have. Once you run out of willpower, you are automatically going to go to back to your old programming, which runs your brain. And the old programming is your old habits and everything. You're going to go for that cookie because your, your brain is trying to make it very easy for you to achieve the feeling that you actually want in your subconscious uh, thinking. So, and this, which, which we're coming in for the touchdown, what is it that we're trying to do? I'm going to do it one word at a time. Got to catch each line of code to take part the dominoes that is what we're trying to do so we go from the initial feeling we realize that we're at this, we're at the receiving end of the last domino. Uh, and then we're like, we find ourselves like, oh, what do I do now? A lot of times, most people are just like, uh, they go with the flow of the feeling and let it take over. So when you're saying you got to catch each line of code to take apart the dominoes, essentially, logically speaking, you're at, the domino effect happens. So you're at the last domino. That yep. last domino has hit you you now are catching yourself in that line of code in that in that program in that moment you're like whoa i'm feeling this so you now become aware oh i'm at the last domino so you start working backwards all right yeah. this line of code just ran let's go back a domino what line of code or what what line of code ran before that so you would look yep. at your thought what thought did i have before this or what was i listening to or what was i thinking about what was i visualizing and then when you get to that line of code, that next fast domino, you work back to the domino before that until eventually you follow the trail all the way back to the initial domino, which will be in your subconscious mind, some old past event, thing, belief, whatever that list is. And then from there, you, you can dismantle it. So that way, that line of dominoes that initially hits you in that boom moment has basically been disarmed, um, taken apart. Yep. And so... This leads up to what we were talking about yesterday of the actual process of, okay, here's the feeling and then you work your way back just uncovering uh, the, each little domino. So this is just the lead up to yesterday.
like where we started yesterday, actually going into dismantling each little domino. So this is like an introduction to actually doing it. Because overall, the big, big picture is this right here. To achieve anything in life, you have to know where am I and where am I going? Oh, one second. Where do I, I want to go? This is the biggest thing right here of just in life. This is what this is helping you achieve. If you want to achieve anything in life, you always start with where am I now and where do I want to go? So this is what I drew out. Check it out. Uh, so at the can bottom, you put it, can you put it on your front screen? So, cause I'm seeing it backwards right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jelly bean. So okay. I have mine. So it's, I have it right here. Initially it was Bob's adventures. And then Bob has a dot, 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 boom moment which is had a um, some thought or feeling that took over the ship. Then we get to A, the last domino. The domino doubling effect. One inch domino can double, uh, topple a two inch going all the way up. Um, seven dominoes starting with the one inch can knock over what a two foot domino or something like that. Yeah, doubling, doubling domino. Yeah. So then after A goes down to process B. So B is I want to recognize it for what it is truly is which is a program running in your brain it's just a line of code which then drops on to see what is the mind the mind needs an image why so when you are trying to draw the image of the mind because based off Thurman fleets quote the mind is chaos without an image and an image illuminates it so we draw out the circle the circle is drawn with a line horizontally down the middle splitting it in half the top section represents the conscious mind and the bottom section represents the subconscious mind. So the subconscious yeah. mind, for those who are not aware, is your habits, automatic risk functions like breathing, walking, things of that sort. And triggered triggers and emotions, which are the line of codes from, say, the boom moment or the last domino effect. Now, the then we draw out the conscious mind to another circle. And the conscious mind processes um, sight, sound, smell, um, speech and then touch it receives now, information through those methods yeah, yeah so those, that's the sensory input coming into the conscious mind the conscious like mind it, yeah. has to filter and process it so on average throughout the day someone at some point said we have about seventy thousand thoughts per day so we're going off that number on only five percent of those thoughts are original because original thoughts take willpower we know that that's a depletable daily source so 95 percent of our thoughts our old thoughts, which means their thoughts running in our subconscious mind, the underlying code. So we draw this thing right here. The, so the program always resides in our subconscious mind. The subconscious mind feeds that down into the body, which creates certain feelings, experiences, emotions, or states because the body needs feelings and it likes the same type of feeling, which is why sometimes we can uh, play out bad programs over and over. But anyways, then you ask the question, how do I change a program in the subconscious mind? Well, let's draw out how most people go about it. Most people try to use their subconscious mind using the thing called desire. Desire no, is... They try to use their conscious mind, Anthony. You, you meant to yeah, say that's conscious what, mind. Their it sounded like you said subconscious saying. mind. No, no. They're using their conscious mind. Uh, they're using desire, which is generated from the conscious mind, to try to change a program which is in the subconscious mind. Desire... Has to, be, has to use willpower as its fuel source. But willpower is a limited daily resource, meaning the more decisions you make, it depletes throughout the day, it's being full as you wake up. Then, as willpower runs out, you inevitably will run the old programs, jumping back up. So remember, 5% original thoughts, 95% old thoughts. So you run the old programs, and now you're back to where you started. So your people will go through this loop over and over, and never really accomplishing. So what are we doing? What is this whole process that we were just discussing earlier? Well, 
we're trying to take the program that's in the subconscious mind and you were trying to catch that line of code that we were referring to up here, the last domino, that feeling, thought, we're recognizing it as a line of code. We're trying to catch that code because once we catch that code, we talked about the doubling domino effect, how dom dominoes can knock over something double their size sequentially going down. So the domino effect means this huge domino hits you, that feeling. Think of that feeling as a line of code and now begin to work your way back down the line of dominoes that initiated. So you're slowly working back, back to your subconscious mind so you can get to the source point, the origin. And then once you get there, you can do the reprogramming so that that boom domino moment no longer has, um, I guess you could say, r control of your ship. It's no longer going to yep. be running that 95% thought it's going to be running in there but slightly changed it's going to have new meaning you're you've overwritten the code so that yeah. would be me summarizing everything we just did and i really like it because it now you have something in your head and it actually got me thinking i'm going to start doing some research on how to make like little uh those videos where you can draw out the stick things as you narrate i'll try to find some program because i feel like i'd really enjoy doing that like to make a digital format of this Doodling. basically Doodly. Oh, I got to write that down. Because I just got an idea, like, that would be something fun to try out to do to see if I'd like. Because if I liked it, that'd be a cool thing to make money off of. I could, for, to start off, just start sharing my concepts and ideas by drawing out the star stuff. Which, I'm actually working on a cool thing. Because at work today, I had a random moment of free time. And I, I brought my notebook because I had this feeling in the morning... I should grab my notebook today to work. And I was like, huh, I've never, I've never had that thought. And I was playing around with this idea of you take a nine pointed star and you start adding up the numbers and then you add up the in between number, reduce it. And I just kept going and I started noticing a really cool pattern where every time you drop down a layer. So from the first one, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. In the second layer, it goes by uh, twos. So it goes three, five, seven, nine, two, four, six, eight, one. Still using the same numbers, but they're just spaced out differently. And then one layer lower, it, it goes up by fours. It goes eight, three, seven, two, six, one, five, nine, four. So I found this cool pattern. And like I said, I'm a student of life. So I'm like, wait, what is the patterns for each of the different type of pointed stars? And then to see, is there some kind of mathematical formula? Because I built these ether coil generators, and I'm just trying to figure out, like, the math behind it. So that was a cool breakthrough on the side. But anyways. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, we have uh, a few minutes left. Um, any, what, what's uh, some of that feedback of yours on this? So this is an introduction to actually what we're, the next step, which is. No, this is phenomenal. The dominoes. I definitely think we can fine tune it and maybe tweak it better. But for now, if if I, when I was first starting the process, if I have if I had seen at least this, it would have made the process a bit easier. Mind you, I've you know I've been studying this stuff on my own, so that's yep. why I like understood it. But if you're a new person, this seconds. is the this is what you would need. So yeah, awesome. I think so it's tomorrow, perfect for now. Tomorrow's live. How about you? I will pretend I know nothing about this, and you teach it to me. Yeah, we'll do a live run through of the boom thing and then uh, sounds good. That'd be a fun one. Awesome. Well, another great day, another great uh, live. Uh, oh, today was an absolute pleasure. Battled yeah, through yesterday you. and today was just like, woo, winning streak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, 2 p.m. Uh, Hawaii. Uh, 1 p.m. Hawaii, 7 oh, EST, yeah. 4 Cali time. time. Yeah. One, All right. Yeah, two, yeah four o'clock. Awesome. Peace be with you, and I see y'all tomorrow and you. See y'all tomorrow. Peace, peace.